Turn with me, please, to the book of John, chapter 3. St. John, chapter 3, and I do trust you have your Bibles this morning. I, I was teasing with Cynthia upstairs. I, I said, I, now, I don't have a PowerPoint, but I've got 90 scriptures we're going to read. Her eyes got about that big around. Well, we won't read all 90 of them, but I actually have that many in my notes. I got, it got tickled as I was, I was getting ready, and I began to count the number of scriptures that I have made reference to. And, and actually, there are 90 scriptures in my notes. Amen? Amen? Don't you just hate it when a guy gets up and preaches and never opens the Word of God? Let me try that again. Don't you just hate it when a guy gets up and preaches and never opens the Word of God? Amen. Listen, I told you last week, it's the Word that makes the difference. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to start in St. John chapter 3. I want you to put your finger there, and then I want you to go to the book of Romans chapter number 1. Romans chapter number 1. I don't know how many fingers you have this morning, but you're going to need a lot of them. Romans chapter number 1. Then I want you to go, and if you're like me, you've got paper clips. It makes it a whole lot easier. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And that's all the fingers I'll ask you to have this morning as we, we begin to open up the Word of God. We have many, many among us that are sick today, uh, physically with the flu and and other things that are going on, I would ask that you please to keep them in your prayers, that the Lord will heal them and raise them up and bring them back to be with us, because I know you miss them as much as I do. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 is where we will start, and we will read these backwards, so, so just hang in with me here. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Question, do you really believe we are living in the last days? Okay, if you really believe that, if you, if you don't believe that, then you need to read what I'm about to read and ask yourself, is this our world today? For men shall be lovers of them own selves. Are they? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. You probably say, I don't know, because you're not sure what that word means, right? Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, they deny the power thereof. Jump down to verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow, Paul described in great detail the world in which we live. For we are truly living in the last days. Jump over to verse 13. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is that our world? So what do we do? Verse 14. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. <laughs> Let me say that again. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. What things are those? The things in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture 
is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, and that's not just the preacher, that's you too. Let me say that again. That's not just the preacher, that's you too. Let me say that again. You don't understand this, folks. It's not just the preacher that needs the Word of God. It's you too. Because you need to be sharing it with somebody every day of your life. I know that's hard to say amen to because you don't. But do you agree that you should? (laughs) Well, then why don't you? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. May thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, question. Just how crazy is our world? That's a good answer. Crazy is a good answer, and I'll come back to that. Turn to the book of Romans, please, chapter number 1. And for time's sake, I was supposed to read the whole chapter, but for time's sake, I'm going to start in verse number 12. There really isn't anywhere good just to jump in, but that's what we're going to do. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, if our world is really crazy, and the world in which we live is as Paul just described, and you agreed agreed, agreed that it is like that, don't you believe we need to find some way of being comforted in it? Find some way of finding peace in the midst of this chaos? Find some way of being able to survive this wicked world in which we live? Look what Paul said. Now I would not have you, ignorant brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Now, how can we be comforted? Are you ready? I'm just going to tell you this, and I want you to grab it. By clinging to each other. Do you know that crazy people love crazy people? And do you know that sane people love crazy people? Say, how you know? Because you love me. We always hear the phrase, birds of a feather flock together. That's kind of what we, we think, right? And in the world in which we live, as Paul has described it, we need each other. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I don't have the privilege or the non-privilege, whatever, however you want to look at it, of going to work where people cuss all day long. Now, I know Phil wants to, (laughs) and probably could, especially when it comes to his mother. No, I didn't say that. His mother-in-law, I didn't. didn't. Um, But I remember, watch it. I remember when I did. And being amidst that stuff, if I wasn't careful, it would drag me down. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I could not wait for Wednesday to get to church to be around God's people. I couldn't wait to go to church on Sunday and fellowship with those that are crazy like me. Because crazy people love crazy people. And that's what Paul said. You're living in a wicked, wicked world. You need each other. I, I don't understand. And I don't guess I ever will. How people can say they don't need the church. I don't understand that, folks. I love God. I've been saved 50 plus years of my life. I've studied the Word of God, and I've read it from cover to cover, and I believe it, and I read it, and I do my best to practice it, but I'm here to tell you something, folks. I need you. 
And whether you like it or not, you need me. Well, maybe not me, but at least that person sitting next to you. Because we've got to encourage one another. And Paul went on to say, I'm a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, mm, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Pause. Go to 1 Corinthians, please. Chapter 15. I know I didn't have you put your finger there because I scared you'd run out. We'll come back to Romans, so don't lose it. 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said that I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. So, what does he want to tell them? What is it the Romans needed to hear? What is it Timothy needed to tell the world in which he lived? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which ye are what? If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Oh, and by the way, listen carefully. Listen carefully. You are not saved by a prayer. You're saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are not saved by a, quote, plan, unquote, of salvation. You're saved by the finished work of the man of salvation, Jesus Christ. And many people will come down and they will say a prayer. And you can get them to say, Lord, save me but they have not believed with all their heart. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that it's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I'm asking you, right here, right now, before I even get to my introduction, I'm asking you, are you really saved? Or did you just pray a prayer because somebody told you to? Are you really saved? Or did you just say, okay, God, save me, amen, and never mean it with all your heart? You say, well, preacher, how do you know the difference? In here. In here. Oh, and by the way, out here, because the transformation starts in here and it works its way out. And if you're trying to work your way in from out, you're wrong. Only Jesus can change your heart and only Jesus can change your life and only Jesus can save you. Say, preacher, who are you mad at? The devil. Folks, I'm going to lose my fingers. That's all right. We live in a world where on Sunday morning, people gather in an auditorium like ours, hear a quote, preacher, unquote, Tell them they'll be all right if they just love their neighbor, if they just do good. And walk out the doors the same way they walked in with never hearing of the precious blood of Jesus Christ that redeems, ransoms, and reconciles them from God and saves them eternally. 
And I never, I never want that to be the case here. I want you to know every time you walk in those doors how much God loves you and how much He wants to save you and how much He wants to redeem you and how He shed His blood that we might be saved. Amen. We act like a bunch of Baptists. Paul said, I'm ready to preach to you that which I also received. Oh, I love it. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. And that he was buried. Oh, but hallelujah, read it out loud with me. And that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's what our world needs today. They don't need another church. They don't need another preacher that can draw a big crowd. They don't need another auditorium full of gold and silver. They don't need another temple. They need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Back to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Say, preacher, why do they need the gospel? Well, I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed to the gospel of Christ. Read this out loud with me, please. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Read it again, starting at the first. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. And I know we're going to read a few more scriptures, but Lord, this is, this is what we need. This is what's missing in our churches. This is what's missing in our wicked world. This is what we need. The power of God, the dynamos of God. The power of salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But I thank you that it was given to the Gentiles that we might be saved. Drive these truths home to our hearts. In your name I pray, amen. John chapter number three, please. St. John chapter number three. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that's a physical birth, and of the spirit, that's a spiritual birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For that which is born of the flesh, or that which is born of the water, is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Please read verse 7 out loud with me. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And the wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, 
art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, or truly, truly, surely, surely, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witnesses. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And we're going to read out loud together verse 15, 16, 17, and 18. So please read along with me that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world, condemned the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Man, ain't it good to be saved. You know, we categorize people in our world. We call them rich and poor. We call them smart and not so smart. We call them good. We call them bad. And we call them really bad. We call them murders. We call them thieves. We call them morally correct. We call them workers. We call them not workers. We call them givers. We call them takers. We call them nice. We call them not so nice. We call them Greeks and Romans and Israelis and Gentiles. We call some godly and some ungodly. And yet, no matter which category you are in, understand this, there's only two types of people, saved and lost. And which one are you? Which one are you? You say, well, preacher, I go to church, praise the Lord, but are you saved? You say, preacher, I'm a good daddy, praise the Lord, but are you saved? You say, preacher, I'm a good mommy, praise the Lord, but are you saved? There's only two types of people in this world, those who are going to heaven and those who will spend eternity in hell, and there is no in-between. You see, the difference is not whether you're good or bad, rich or poor, big or small, tall or skinny, fat or not so fat, tall or short. It doesn't matter. You know what the difference is? Whether you are saved or whether you are lost. Whether you've trusted Christ or whether you've not trusted Christ. Whether you've come to the Savior and believed the gospel that is the power of God and the salvation, or whether you've rejected the Son of God. You say, well, preacher, I haven't done either. Well, verse 18 says that if you've not done either, then you're condemned already because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. doesn't matter where in the Scriptures you go, whether you're in the Old Testament or whether you're in the New Testament, you will find every type of person I have mentioned. You can find the rich man and the Lazarus. You can find the rich young ruler. You can find the beggar at the gate beautiful in the book of Acts. You can find the beggar, blind Bartimaeus. You can find the woman at the well. You can find the Gadarian demoniac. You can find the woman that is taken in adultery. You'll find the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and you'll find crazy people like John the Baptist. But here's what I know. No matter who they are, they're either saved or lost. And I know that our theme today is what our world needs. And I could ask you, 
what you think the world needs? Some of you would say it needs a good slap upside the head. Some of you would say it needs a wake-up call that would really wake them up. Some of you would say it needs a swift kick in the pants. Some of you would say, oh, preacher, they just need a little more understanding. They just need a little more tolerance. They just need a little more love. Some of you would say they need a better education or a better educational uh, institution. Some of you would say, preacher, they just need more money. And if they had more money, they would be better people. Some of you would say, and I agree, that we just need a different government. Well, not different government, just different people up there. It was Burt Bacharach, 1965. That said, what the world needs now is, it's the only thing that there's just too little love. Some of you were alive. Some of us weren't. But some of you were alive back in the 60s when free love was the thing. Where did that get us? Remember what I've told you time and time and time again? One generation's lowest standard is the next generation's highest. So take the lowest standard of the 60s And that was the highest of the 70s and 80s. And take the lowest standard of the 70s and 80s, and that was the highest of the 90s and 2000s. And take the lowest standard of the 90s and 2000s, and look at our world today. And it all started with love, sweet love. That's the only thing. You know what happened? They forgot 1 John chapter 4 that says God is love. And they turned it around and they said, love is God. Wrong answer. God is love and without God you cannot know love, but love ain't God. Hello? Understand that. So what does our world really really need whether you're smart like Nicodemus whether you're rich like Zacchaeus whether you're poor like Lazarus whether you're a beggar like Bartimaeus whether you're sitting at the gate beautiful begging for alms or whether you're, whether you're the one walking by with the alms to give. The world needs the same thing. And it's Jesus. Jesus is still the answer for a world living in sin. Jesus is still the answer. And all of these are okay as far as answers. But more than anything else, our world needs Christ. John chapter 14, verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The book of Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12. There is ne- neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You say, well, preacher, everybody knows Jesus is the answer. Yeah, but not everybody's trusted him. For you see, We have people that are trusting in their good works. We have people that are trusting in their parents' religion. We have people that are trusting in their spouse's religion. We have people that are trusting in 
other things like their church membership or giving $100 to the preacher? What our world needs is Christ as their personal Savior. If you go back to the book of Timothy, the only way you're going to change society, the only way you're going to change this world in which we live is not by giving them more money. It's not by giving them better education. It is by giving them Jesus Christ. So the first thing I would say is our world needs Jesus. The second thing I would say is our world needs Christians who will show Jesus to them. I I know it gets real quiet here. But the word of God tells you and I that we are the salt and the light that we are a candle on a hillside, and that we are to be a true witness of what salvation can do to an individual life, how it can change your heart, how that it can change your home, how that Jesus can make you new again. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. They need to see that inside of us is true hope. They need to see that inside of us is the light that shines through us. They need to see Christians who care enough to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was Paul, and I can't read it enough. In the book of Romans chapter 1, It was Paul that said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And yet in our world today, we have Christians that are secret agents, man. There's no secret agent in the service of our Savior. You need to boldly show You need to boldly proclaim. You need to boldly go. You need to boldly share and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the only thing that will redeem and ransom and save a man's soul. But yet, our world is missing that witness. And then I think the third thing, and I'm done, Our world needs a church that is committed to spreading the gospel around the world. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the word of God says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our church, our world needs a church that will proclaim the truth. Our world needs the church that will provide so others can go. And our world needs a church that will pray for the salvation of lost souls. As I think about the society in which we live, good, bad, and ugly, I know this. They need someone to care. They need someone to share. They need someone to live. They need someone to give. They need someone to pray. So my question is, will you be that someone today?